The Dubs exacted a tiny bit of revenge for their playoff L to LA, albeit in the preseason, beating the LeBronless Lake Show by 17. Brandon Pojemski resembled a legit backup point guard by playing lockdown perimeter D and dropping 11 points, 5 boards, 4 dimes to go along with a steal, a block, and a drawn charge. In CP's debut, he dropped 5 dimes and combined with fellow starters Curry, Thompson, Wiggins, and Looney for 34 points. Kerr finally went to Rudy Gay in the late third quarter, who hit a patented pull-up shot, beasted through Jackson Hayes for an and one, played very well off the ball, didn't over-dribble, and was also active defensively, utilizing his 7'3 wingspan to force Christian Wood into several misses. But the actual reason for why the dub should give Rudy a roster spot is due to how he can mentor a young and at his position in Jonathan Kaminga, who's already talked about Rudy having an Andre Iguodala type effect. Kaminga dropped a game-high 24 to lead the way off the DHO from Saric. This was a signature elusively quick twitch downhill attack to his offhand around Davis. Then, when isolated on the block, Taking the face up, jab step, jab drive, simultaneous spin move and hop step, and balanced finish over Torian Prince. It also seemed like he watched some tape to improve defensively, as here he makes an elite rotation on the backside, and most importantly defends without fouling, but also winds up for a monster pin to the backboard and controls the rebound. Here, John sticks with Christie, who tries to fend him off on a transition drive. It seems like Max has an open lay in but then Kaminga just springs up for a video game-esque recovery. Here, he's going to catch the lob and switch hands in mid-air, and he's still able to dunk the alley from Kendrick Davis. Just insane hang time. One of Kaminga's three triples was off the dribble, the other three were contested spot-ups, but what stood out to me was this possession, where he fakes an overhead pass to the corner, then smoothly transitions into creating in the pick and roll before stepping back for a 2019 Kawhi-esque midi from the elbow. Chris Paul's debut in Warrior Threads saw him create a fair share of offense, as in under 15 minutes, he racked up five dimes, made a pressure-relieving fadeaway from the right baseline, and aside from one out-of-control kickout and moving screen, flowed within the system well for someone in a team debut. Going back to the reason for why CP was acquired in the first place, to help with the chemistry, and recently, Andrew Wiggins stated that Jordan Poole wasn't at fault for the punch, which was the not-so-underlying reason for Jordan being dealt to Washington. While a lot surrounding said punch rightfully revolves around Green and Poole, the effect it had on former team president Bob Myers, I don't think gets talked about enough. The all-time great executive in Myers, quite frankly, couldn't make up his mind between the youth movement led by Poole or going all-in to fulfill the championship window and appease the likes of Draymond. The extremely publicized incident was the primary reason for why Myers decided to step down as team president. Moving either Draymond or Jordan was a decision that had to be made, and right on cue, after Mike Dunleavy took over in mid-June, less than a month later, Jordan was traded. Dealing either Poole or Green was something Myers was unwilling to do. Overall, the strain the punch took on the Dubs' entire organization is a narrative Golden State will have to work toward moving on from. Draymond's ability to stay composed remains a major question mark going forward, as while he's the Dubs' enforcer, Green has to find a healthier balance between staying calm and getting hyped up. But it was good to see him communicative and in good spirits for the most part on the bench. A new NBA protocol which doesn't fully come into play until the regular season forces injured players to sit with their teams on the bench now. This meant the resting LeBron was also in attendance, and potential 2024 USA Olympic team members in James, Curry, and Davis met at half court following the final buzzer, as that team for the Americans is going to challenge the dream team back in the 90s when they meet up in Paris. Shifting to the man in the middle where Kevon Looney seems to have benefited from an offseason of rest, as the man was a hound on the interior with two offensive boards, five rebounds total, one steal, and one block all in just 13 minutes, and he was also tied for a game high in plus minus. Kerr also got solid minutes from Indiana Hoosier legend Trace Jackson Davis. The Rook held his own out there, protecting the paint, and generally defending with precision, as Davis ended up racking up two blocks and two steals. This was all without not just fundamental piece for the starting lineup, Draymond, 
but a player that's going to be a key part of the bench unit in Corey Joseph. Kojo is expected to be the primary backup point guard, but Pojemski seems like he can be a 2012 Norris Cole type of rookie. Brandon didn't make too many mistakes, displayed underrated strength down low to bully his matchup, and held up his own defensively. I really like what I see from Pods as a young professional. Whether or not his coach with a history of giving young players a short leash does is up in the air. It'd be good to see Kerr give Brandon a spot in the rotation, as the 19th overall pick could be an instant 15 to 20 minute per night weapon. From a chemistry standpoint, even when Kaminga threw it away to Steph on the sidelines, the vibes reaching a premium level directly after that mistake entails that things are off to a pretty good start. Despite that rare but necessary lighthearted moment, the vibe for the most part on the Dubs bench is more professional than it's been in ages. Who knew CP, a player that hated Steph, Clay, and Draymond for years after repeatedly getting bounced by the Warriors time after the next when he was with Houston, had the capacity to get along with those same guys like he has right off the bat. Clay was evidently shocked by how good of a pass he got directly in his sweet spot on one possession, to the point where he bricked a short midi, but specifically, it's been cool to see both Steph and Chris put their beef from the past aside. From a playbook standpoint, this was one of a few nicely executed out of bounds plays, where the 5 in Jackson Davis screens the inbounders man, while the entry is sent to the 4 in Rudy, and that pick from Davis gets Robinson open under the basket where Rudy finds him. From a storyline standpoint, the 14th and 15th spots both being up for grabs remains the most prevalent narrative. One of the men competing for a spot in Rodney Magruder was out under concussion protocol for the first game, but he and Rudy Gay are probably still top contenders for those spots. Don't count out Jerome Robinson, who looked driven amidst scoring 8 points in 10 minutes. Another great sign for Golden State, albeit only after one game of the preseason, was Moses Moody showing up for a team's second best 15 points. I mean, we were just talking about the importance of Moody and Kaminga yesterday, and Golden State winning by 17 with those two being the top players further exemplifies their value. The dub's depth may be better than I initially gave it credit to be, given the NBA readiness of Pojemski and the fast-paced, extremely talented three-man attack he can form with Jonathan and Moses. Trace Jackson Davis, like his fellow rookie in Brandon, seems like he's going to be a stable option. Throw in mentors like Joseph, Saric, and Gay, and the Dubs bench doesn't seem like it'll be bad after all. Protecting home handedly against the team that took him out last spring was a good start to the 2023 24 campaign. Preseason or not, the Dubs can use these games to build up momentum, but commenter shout out for my last video goes to Michael White, and given I'm bringing Community Speaks back, he's the first one on the Speaks board for your chance at a free NBA jersey or shoe. Firstly, subscribe to this channel and answer the following question down below in the comments, and the top 5 commenters get some merch. Only the top 2 get a choice of shoe, the number 3 to 5 ranked commenters get a choice of jersey. Again, compete in Community Speaks by leaving your take on today's question. This was your boy D-Flow, and peace.